A. Protection and Patency Airway tone is necessary to protect the delicate structures within the lungs from aspiration. Aspiration of gastric contents will cause the patient a lot of problems due to pneumonitis, a condition which may well result in mechanical ventilation. Aspiration pneumonia is caused by bacteria that normally reside in the oral and nasal pharynx. Historically, aspiration pneumonia referred to an infection caused by less virulent bacteria, primarily oral, pharyngeal anaerobes. It's now recognised that the many common community acquired and hospital acquired pneumonias result from the aspiration of pathogens from the oral cavity or nasopharynx. The microorganisms that commonly cause these pneumonias, such as Streptococcus pneumoniae, Haemophilus influenza, Staphylococcus aureus and gram-negative bacteria, are relatively virulent, so that only a small inoculum is required to result in a pneumonia. This is also one of the reasons we are concerned about ventilator-acquired pneumonia, as the patient's secretions can find their way into the patient's lungs, one of the reasons we sit them up. The airway tone may be compromised for a number of reasons. One of the main reasons is that the patient's neurological status is reduced, i.e. their GCS has fallen. It is commonly taught that if the GCS is 8 or less in a trauma patient, then they should be intubated to protect the airway. This rule is often quoted in those patients who have not suffered from trauma, for example those patients who have been poisoned. It is important in these cases, however, to assess the patient more fully, having some awareness that their airway may not need such formal protection, and whether you are in the right environment to do it. The loss of airway tone can result in an obstructed airway, as the soft tissues fall backwards, causing a blockage. The airway can also become obstructed for a number of other reasons, such as trauma, infection or foreign bodies. It is in these cases that the airway may also need to be managed more formally. The endotracheal tube is considered the gold standard in these situations, although sometimes the hazards with this procedure has led to this being questioned in the past. Remember also that airway tone can be reduced as a consequence of an elective procedure. For example, when the patient goes for surgery and needs to be rendered unconscious, then that airway needs to be protected whilst the surgery is ongoing. It may also be that the patient has become agitated and therefore for their own safety and possibly to allow investigations to take place, they may need to be electively sedated, which again requires us to protect their airway. B. Respiratory failure hypercapnic or hypoxic, increasing functional residual capacity, decreased work of breathing, secretion management stroke pulmonary toilet and to facilitate bronchoscopy. The patient may require intubation because their respiratory function is becoming compromised, resulting in low oxygen levels, hypoxemia, or high carbon dioxide levels, hypercapnia. These are otherwise known as respectively type 1 respiratory failure or type 2 respiratory failure and there could also be a mixed picture where both types of failure exist together. There can be a number of reasons for either of these conditions developing. Commonly infection is at the root of the problem. A lower respiratory tract infection can quickly turn into a pneumonia which potentially, even in the healthiest of patients, can cause serious respiratory compromise. A type 1 respiratory failure can be caused by a problem in the alveoli such as collapse or the presence of pus, edema or blood. It could be that there is a chronic fibrosis of the lungs making the alveoli less distensible. It could also be caused by a problem with the vasculature within the lungs caused by for example a pulmonary embolism or pulmonary hypertension, both of which would make gas exchange more difficult. A type 1 respiratory failure, or low oxygen levels, can initially be managed by delivering oxygen via nasal cannula or face masks. However, if the situation continues to deteriorate and the patient begins to tire, mechanical ventilation is often the next resort. This will then require intubation of the patient. A type 2 respiratory failure which is as a result of either or decreased ventilation and increased dead space ventilation is most commonly caused 
by a chronic obstructive airways disease. This is usually as a result of cigarette smoking, resulting in an emphysema. It can also be caused by neurological disorders causing a hypoventilation, muscle failures such as muscular dystrophies, or neuromuscular transmission failure such as myasthenia gravis. Type 2 failure is now more commonly managed with non-invasive bilevel ventilation in the initial stages. Some patients with chronic obstructive airways disease will be managed quite frequently with this type of ventilation. Often this will reverse the worsening hypercapnia and avoid the need for invasive mechanical ventilation. C. Minimise oxygen consumption and optimise oxygen delivery, e.g. in sepsis. The severely septic patient will often be breathing quite hard. The earliest clinical sign of sepsis is often a rapid respiratory rate. This may be driven by pyrexia, lactic acidosis, local lung pathology, pulmonary edema, cytokine mediated effects on the respiratory control center or a combination of several of these factors. This type of patient, due to the inflammatory response of the body, has a high demand for oxygen whilst possibly having a reduced supply. This double-edged sword means that they can become compromised very quickly. Mechanical ventilation therefore allows a more effective delivery of oxygen to the patient's circulation through the use of devices such as pressure support ventilation and positive end expiratory pressure or PEEP. Together these help to ensure that the alveoli will not be overstretched during ventilation. Acute respiratory distress syndrome, or ARDS, where the lungs are injured by circulating inflammatory mediators, results in severe impaired gas exchange in the septic patient. The ventilation of this type of patient is an ongoing debate with many parameters being suggested and discussed. Needless to say, this is the type of patient that as an intensive care professional, one will encounter quite frequently. D. Unresponsive to pain, terminate seizures, prevent secondary brain injury. The management of status epilepticus will eventually involve the use of a sedative in an effort to terminate the seizure activity. This commonly requires the use of benzodiazepines, whose use will require the protection of the airway, i.e. intubation. The patient may require the benzodiazepines for some time, so the process of intubation is an important one in these cases. In patients with a traumatic brain injury, there is always a risk of a rise in intracranial pressure, which may cause further injury. The actual process of intubation can itself cause a rise in ICP, so when done, it must be done gently by experienced technicians with judicious use of a sedative.